Hi guys, John the Firearms Instructor, and welcome to our live this evening. We are live on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. We are live on Facebook. And if you would do me a favor, if you're on one of those social media, will you please put FB if you're on Facebook and YT if you're on YouTube. It helps us understand where all the all the traffic is coming from. We would truly, truly appreciate uh, you uh, commenting below if you are new to the live as well. And we want to recognize you for that as well. Uh, we have a great show this evening. Uh, it's all about how to aim. We Last week, we did a video on YouTube. And I'm going to show you the thumbnail for it because I think it's a pretty good thing to watch uh, while we are um, while we're talking about this. It is a good. Uh, it was. Let's see here. Uh, there it is. It's how to aim a pistol, and this is uh, mastering your dominant eye. It was a great. We man, we got a lot of comments. We got a lot of people asking a bunch of questions about how do I aim. A how do I aim my pistol? And, you know, sometimes as a firearms instructor, I kind of, oh, okay. I kind of forget that some stuff that I feel is uh, uh, elementary, it's maybe over people's head at that point in time. Uh, there are some noises happening in the background at this point in time. We are live range. We are open till seven o'clock every night. Uh, this is being done here in the, in our in our office, but we're you're going to hear some gunshots here in a while because we've got people live on the range shooting this evening as well. Um, but uh, this was a great video. We had a bunch of people comment on it, especially all over the United States as well as our local guys here. Uh, by the way, if you're local, make sure you let us know where you're where where you're where you're from. If you're in Cape Coral or you are in uh, East Fort Myers or, you know, Naples or where, wherever you're at, we would appreciate you commenting that as well. And one last thing, if you're watching this live, can you just put LI on there live? And if you're watching on the replay, you can just put replay on there. Be help, that helps us understand who's watching it after the fact. This was a great video because this started out with this little thing that you see me in my hand. I made a green one, but I, I made one for you guys tonight as well. This, is, this demonstrates the front and back post of a sight system. Now, this is a three-dot system, which, you know, Glocks and, and some of the other guns out there only have a box and dot system. Similar to Tauruses, Glocks, things like that. Well, Smith & Wesson and a lot of the other ones have a three-dot system, and this is what we kind of play with. Let me flip over to our secondary camera where I can kind of demonstrate this for you real quick. Here we go. Let's see if I can get this one off here first and then hit that. There it is. Secondary camera. Look at that. Different view for you guys. Hopefully it's not showing anything mess in my office. No, it's not. So kind of see that right there. That is our three dot system. And this kind of helps us level out the pistol as much as possible. And when we level a pistol, a level pistol shoots level. But what we're trying to think about is we want to make sure that the top of this top of this is level as well you kind of see where if i were to take this and bring this higher than the ones up front that would put that pistol in an angle of this right got the concept of that and if i were to take this and bring it down lower well, what's that going to do that's going to take the put the gun in this position and what we're trying to do is keep the gun level by bringing it up together. So we talk to students all the time. It's all about this top piece has to be level. And then we have this two negative spaces right here that these two need to be level as well. So if I slide this over to one side and I have more negative, more less negative space and less negative space and more negative space here, what's that going to do? That's going to put the pistol in this angle. And if I do the opposite, it's going to put the pistol in this angle. The sight system alone on most pistols is one of the most things that people get kind of, they don't understand where this 
these three dots are supposed to be on the target. And that's what this whole video is about. So I, I thought I'd show you this up front right off the bat to kind of get your head around this. Uh, these are sights that are on most of our pistols, uh, whether it's blacked out back sights or a front post. These could be glow in the dark, but there's still the same effect. And what you're trying to do, let's see if I can put a little square up here. What we're trying to do is put a dot right there. Six o'clock hole, similar to that right there. We do that, we're going to be okay. When we cover the sight, that's when we start shooting high. Because don't ever forget, the barrel right here is below the line of sight. And if I were to put this barrel on the target, my sights are going to be above my barrel, which in turn, my impact will be high as well. So I thought I'd show you this first. Let me get back to my regular screen. Close that off. And there I am. All right, so we'll remove the one. And we will just get to me. There I am. All right. So tonight we're going to cover a lot of different stuff. Uh, before we get started, though, I want to remind everybody who's local that we do have our gift card sale going on. The gift card sale is buy $100 worth of gift cards and you get $20 free. So you get $120 for 100 bucks. And those can be used for any services and, and things that we offer here, whether it be um, uh, training classes, you can put it towards firearms, you can put it towards uh, range time or whatever you want to do. But that's a great gift. If you have that hard to look for shopper that's hard to buy for, what can they say against safety and and in the in an ability to control themselves and be able to be safe? Uh, obviously, a firearms training class would be a great gift for anybody. So, uh, give us a call. We we we're open seven days a week and come put one of these in the stocking. It's a great deal. Um, awesome. So let's go ahead and start this presentation. Uh, I'll, I'll, we've got some comments. Let's see what we got first. Let's go to those comments real quick. Let's pull this off. Let's look at our comments. Oh, Hillary, there we go. Hey, there's Miss Johnson. And there we go. All right, so here we go. We got six people live on the night, so we appreciate that. Last week, some people were saying, that when they tried to do any kind of comments, that they were having a little bit of trouble. The, the thing wouldn't, the, the, the actual typer wouldn't type so um, on their phone. So I don't know if you're having that problem, but if you are having a problem like that, please let us know so we can get StreamYard, the company that we use that helps us do this each week. Uh, they're always wanting to make sure that these lives are, are go right in line. And uh, there's no real hassles for it. So it makes it so simple and easy for us. All right. So let's go ahead and add this to the screen. We will um, remove this one here. Oh, I love this stuff here. We'll remove this banner here for me. We'll remove this. And we're going to start. Whoop, whoop, getting too carried away there. All right, so tonight we're going to talk about iron sights. These are those, these are what they call. They're you know not every gun has iron sights on it anymore. Most of them are plastic. Glock has some metal sights. Smith and West has metal, but there are a lot of manufacturers nowadays that only have uh, plastic sights. So, but the Glock and most of the other ones do have that. So, these are ten tips for sight usage with a handgun, and that's a good picture of me right there. The the, the good looking guy there. All right. So I guess I just gave you the basic understanding of a sight system, but one of the most important things you need to make sure you, that the, the web, the, the sights are aligned and they have the negative space perfect on the back side and front side, and that your top sights are level at that point in time. Because a lot of times when, we, when we're watching somebody back there shoot, we do training classes almost every day. It always seems like they're using the wrist to aim the gun instead of their waist to aim the gun. And the moment you start using your wrist to aim the gun, you're putting that gun in an angle that's going to front take those front posts and make them low. And a low front post is going to make the gun shoot low. High front post is going to make the gun shoot high. 
So side alignment is very important. Not only side alignment, but that negative space between the two back posts and your front posts, those need to be equal as well. If you have it at an angle, you're going to run into a problem with that. That's kind of what I wanted to show you that site system before we did it, that you had an idea of what you need to do. Now, a lot of times we talk to people all the time in regards to making sure the pistol is level. A level pistol shoots level. And where most people run into a problem is they're either dipping their head when they look at the sight system. In other words, let's see if I can show you this one more time. Uh, let's go back to our dual screen. I think dual screen will help us with this. So if I'm looking at the pistol and I've got it up in my line of sight, but I dip my head to get there, that's going to put me below the system compared to if I keep the gun high and I've got my head over high, I'm going to be looking over my sights. I want to make sure those sights are in my line of sight and I keep the sights level as well. That's going to help us tremendously become more aware of where our sights are, are, are falling on the weapon itself. Take you back off there. And we'll go back to this one. There we go. <clears throat> I hope that understands that. And we'll go right back to this. Number two. Uh, do I want to be on? I don't know if I want to be on. Uh, yeah, I'll be on. What the hell? All right, so numbers. So we got the basics there. So let's go to the next side. So sight alignment, it's the fundamental of aiming. Basically, what we need to figure out is where we're supposed to put these sights on the target. And here at the show, here, 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 here at the shop, we always talk about six o'clock hold. And this is kind of a demonstration of a couple different ways of, of aiming. There's center hold. There is six o'clock hole, and there is combat hole, which is dead center. Uh, it's a lot easier for you to see your target when you're at six o'clock hole than you are if you're covering your sight system, covering your sight system, and not being able to see. So what we're trying to do is get a consistent point of aim, and that consistent point of aim allows us to see where we're hitting the target. If I cover the whole target with the front of my gun, I'm not going to get a consistent point of aim due to the fact that it could be up a little high on one side, a little low on the other side, right or left, and the negative space on the sight system is it. So we try to use our sight alignment and sight picture, and we try to stay at that 6 o'clock hold. That 6 o'clock hold allows you to see exactly the impact of the weapon. Because remember, guys, when we take this weapon, we put it out in front of us here like this. That barrel right here is below the line of sight. If that barrel is below the sight and I put this dot directly on, on the sight itself, my sights are going to be high. So if I were to cover the circle out there, I'm not going to have a great uh, sight alignment because my sights are going to be higher than the actual dot I'm trying to shoot at. So that's kind of what we want to look at there, 6 o'clock hold. All right. So sight picture and focusing techniques. If you look at these three pictures, we try to get people to understand that you need to focus at one point because your mind will not let you focus on the back post and the front post and your sight system. But check this thing out. The incorrect would be really focusing on the target. The incorrect would be focusing on your sights. Like your back sights, right? See how your back sights on that second one is really bright, but your target is non focused. Now, look at the third one. The third one is your back sights are kind of blurry, and your front post is crystal clear, and your back target is blurry as well. And if you're concentrating on your front post and getting a clear, crisp, clean look at that sight system, it's going to be consistent for you because you're going to be able to concentrate on it. Most people, when they're out there shooting, they're going to lose their focus sooner or later. This is why we always, always recommend low round counts. Low round counts will let us be able to control everything we need to control in five shots. Just think about this, guys. If I have a Glock 19 that holds 15 rounds, 
and I am out there putting 15 rounds down range, when do you think I'm going to start losing my focus or my accuracy is going to weigh? You think it's going to be in the first five shots? Probably not. You think it's going to be on the second five shots? Most likely. How about the third five shots? You get 15 rounds. They're going to be all over the place. And you can prove this to yourself by coming to the range and look at some of these targets that we see in the back there all the time. There are lost focus targets because people are not being able to control the weapon. It's like trying to keep a weight that you're lifting and you're trying to hold it out there and you're trying to lift it as many times as possible. Sooner or later, your muscles are going to get fatigued and you're not going to be able to lift that same amount of weight. It's just going to be fatiguing for you. So ideally, if we stick to five rounds and we focus on that front post being crystal clear and the back post and your sight system being a tad bit blurry, it's going to help us tremendously uh, get, get the concept of a great sight picture as well as focusing on the technique of keeping that gun level and you want it to bring it back. Remember this gun recoils, right? So when the gun recoils, what's our job to do is to bring it back to the line of sight. Boom, boom, boom. The more we bring it back to line of sight, it makes it easier. Now you do some control techniques like driving with your muscles, gentlemen, driving with your packs. We don't shoot a pistol with our hands. We shoot our pistol with our packs. We're trying to drive this gun out and control it as much as possible without over-muscling it. Now, any ladies on this, you need to use your back muscles. Your back muscles definitely help you control the weapon. You're at home right now watching this. I want you to take your dominant hand and stick it out, and I want you to bring your dominant, your non-dominant hand and pull back. That push-and-pull technique like that, if you do it really perfect, your back muscles will kick in, ladies. And then we get our feet shallow with the part, bouncing on our knees just a little bit, get our nose over our toes. And at that point in time, that weapon will stay level when you're shooting it. And this is proven every day here at the range. So don't people go, oh, that's bull. We get people, you got to have thick skin when you have a YouTube channel because people always tell you you don't know what you're doing. After 14 years of training women to shoot, I can tell you most women that come here, once we teach them the, once we teach them the, uh, drive method or the push and pull method they are they are just so elated because they're able to control the weapon a nine millimeter a 40 and a 45 have very little recoil if you control it if you don't control it a 22 has too much recoil so i had a lady this morning her and her husband came all the way from sanibel all the way out and she started to first walked in the door and she was in tears. She did not want to be here. It was just not in her wheelhouse. She realizes she needs to do it because the world's not changing. The world's world's getting worse and worse and worse. And she knows she needs to make sure she understands this weapon. And she had all that, but she was just deathly afraid of recoil. She was deathly afraid she couldn't control the weapon. And we had to get her in her brain. This is nothing but a tool, and you need to operate it. And by the time I got done with her, she, her smile was so big. That's the beauty of being a firearms instructor. So I get, I, it's a passion of mine, and it gets me so elated when I'm taking somebody like that that would definitely would have ran away this morning if I would have let her. She would have jumped in the car and ran away because she didn't want to do it. And I had to take her off, hold her hand, walk her through it, which I love to do. And at the end, those tears went away and that smile came. So that's the beauty of that. And guess what they did after that class? They bought a pistol. And guess what they're doing next week? Coming back and picking it up and, and doing another training class with us. That's the whole concept of this. What I, what I told her, what I tell you every time, you run the tool, the tool don't run you. A firearm is just a tool, and it needs to be operated by a craftsman or a craft. I don't think craftswoman is a word, but a craftswoman, <laughs> a craftsman or a craftswoman. You got to run the tool. The tool don't run you. And the more you act like the firearm is going to do something that it really isn't going to do, and you got to get your brain around it, right? That it's just just a thing you got to operate. 
it makes it so much easier for you. So correct side alignment would be what? The back post is the back post are blurry. The front post is crystal clear and your target is blurry. This is a the best sight system you can do for yourself. Okay. All right, so you can't talk about uh sight alignment or sight picture without talking about trigger control. We just did a video yesterday on trigger control. We have a ton of them on here because this is probably one of the things that manipulates the pistol the most when it comes to shooting a firearm, even a rifle or a pistol or a shotgun is pulling or jerking or, or anticipating the recoil. Now, I took this little thing from the internet and it kind of shows you what we love you to do is not shoot with your crease, not shoot with your crease. You want to shoot with the pad, the top pad of your finger. And the concept here, now I'm going to kind of demonstrate this. You don't want to have your whole finger in again. No one's doing this, guys. You don't want your whole finger in. What you want is you want the tip of your finger in there. So that tip of your finger allows you to get that gun back into your hand and control it. You can't keep a gun level if you're jerking the trigger. The more you jerk the trigger, the more you're going to do. So. We talk about a cadence of a slow trigger engagement. It's here, we have it out in front of us, and we just slowly press it until the weapon cuts. This is perfect. You'll see it, you'll feel it. A good shot, guys, feels good. A bad shot feels bad. But when you're pulling the trigger, the lady this morning's husband, Puller Pullison, was what we call him. <laughs> he was pulling, he was pulling the bad. And it's more about anticipation more than anything else. He got that gun in his hand. He put it out in front of him. And bang, he was just pulling that trigger and pulling that trigger and pulling that trigger. And it was uh, manipulating the firearm. You pull a trigger, you're going to manipulate it from about six inches to almost two feet. And it, as you forget further out, it gets even wider and wider and wider. So if you check out this little thing, I've got that. That very first one is the proper area you should be. And it's got that little gap. Do you see where the gun, the hand is on there and the trigger finger's working in there? And there is that little gappy area right here, guys. Uh, let me see if I can get this back there. I'm trying to do it backwards here. But that gap right there is so important because if you put your finger all the way in the gun, this piece of skin right here becomes the enemy. And when you go rolling that into the gun, it's going to cause the gun to roll off. Now, imagine if you're pulling and you're touching, you're going to pull. Now, imagine doing all that and anticipating. There's where the low and the left comes. And it kind of shows you uh, if you squeeze really hard with your right hand, you're going to make this gun go off to the right. And if you squeeze really hard with your left hand, it's going to go off to the left. Our job is to line the two up together, which will allow the gun to stay level. And we always say, what? A level gun shoots level. Exactly. Exactly. So you can kind of see his impact. It's caused by a couple different things. It has to do with how you put it in your hand. It has to do with how much finger you put in the gun and how much manipulation you're doing. Now, obviously, this is showing if he did perfect trigger engagement, he was getting a good grip, good solid grip. He was just sticking his finger too far in or too far out. And look, look, look what it does. It impacts right. It impacts left, you know, in the center. Uh, that's kind of one of those things people think it, it must be the gun. It's not the gun, guys. It's you. We had a guy last week come in and say, hey, yeah, uh, you guys got an Allen wrench. I want to adjust my sights. And I looked at him, I go, what? You want to adjust your sights? What's wrong with your sights? I thought he had a red dot on his gun. No, he wanted to move his iron sights to impact where he was aiming. Which I guess you could do that. But then I said to him, well, how are you holding it? And I went back there, and within two minutes of me working with him, we didn't have to move his sights at all. We just had to get him moved. Because he had the gun over his he, he had a gun over his nose and not over his dominant eye. He was putting too much finger in the gun. He was pulling. 
Do you think those pistols are off from the factory? No, people shoot those from the factory. They have nothing to do. It's all about you. Shooting a pistol is one of those things the most complicated thing you can shoot. A rifle is pretty easy because you got to look down the barrel. But a pistol is such a short barrel and you don't get 100% with either hand. And majority of the time, the large percentage of us being no right-handed, all of our power, all of our strength, and all of our control comes from our non-dominant hand. So trigger control is going to affect your iron sights as much as anything else is. And there's a lot more to that, too, because the importance of a smooth trigger and pull instead of a trigger, a a smooth trigger press instead of a trigger pull. Let me tell you something. If you shoot long enough, you're going to feel good shots and you're going to feel bad shots. And when you have those bad shots, they kick in. It is definitely, definitely uh, something you go, oh, because when I try to do training with students, I try to get them to feel what a good shot feels like. And we want to duplicate that over and over and over again. And as we do that, it becomes easier for us to identify what we're doing wrong. Your target will tell you what you're doing wrong. If you're aiming in the center, you're shooting left. That most likely is you got the gun over your nose and you got too much finger in the gun. If you're right handed and you're pulling all your shots to the right, most likely you're squeezing too hard with your right hand. And then vice versa if you're squeezing, if you're left-handed. Left-handed students mostly shoot right. And right-handed students mostly shoot left because of how they've got the gun in their hand and how much manipulation they're doing. So trigger control affects your iron sights just as much as anything else does. All right. So we talk about grip and stance as well. I mean, it's, I, to do you justice, I have to physically talk about these things because without proper grip and without proper stance and without proper uh, trigger control, these three things are going to cause the weapon to manipulate and be off your sight. Think about this, guys. We I think we talked about this a couple month, a uh, couple sh- uh, lives ago. A we have a a vertical and horizontal line that we need to keep this weapon on. And I think I did a line drill a while back, and that drill is really cool because what it does is we take a black magic marker and we draw a line that goes across our eyes, basically on a target, and we work that dominant eye side. So if you're right-handed, it'd be on your right side, and that cross where the dominant, where the black line goes across and the black line goes down, that area right there is your most consistent point of aim, or it should be, right? So then we use our weapon and try to shoot that line vertically and horizontally. So when you have a pistol in your hand and you've got it over your vertical line like this and your horizontal line, the moment you engage the trigger, if you are pulling the trigger, the shots will be below that line. And that'll tell you what you're doing to the weapon. And vice versa, if you've got the gun out here, And horizontally, if you're trying to run that line horizontally, it's going to tell you how much manipulation you're doing because the bolts will be on the impact on the left side of the line or the right side of the line. So those are two good drills to make sure you're really over the pistol and that horizontal and vertical line is so important because we need to get back to that, to get back to that level pistol that's going to allow you to shoot level. So this is the key thing to that, right? Because our, our job is to keep the gun level, line up those iron sights as best we can, keep it out in front of us, and work that line up and down. Never forget, we don't ever use our wrist to aim a gun. It's about our waist to aim a gun. And the more we play this whole wrist game, the more the sights are going to be off already. Remember, we talked about a level gun shoots level. If I use my wrist to get there, What's, what's the angle of the gun at that point in time? See where these sights are front here or down? You're going to shoot low every time. And then you're trying to figure out why. And from behind, we can see the front post is low. Or we can see, the, you know, a lot of times what ends up happening is people don't focus on the back post at all. They only focus on the front post. And you may be shooting in this position. You imagine if you're shooting in that position, 
you see where the impact's going to happen. It's going to be high. So you kind of have that concept high, right, left, up and down. You, you don't use your wrist aim a gun. You use your waist aim a gun. Keep the gun level and bend at your waist. The weapon's going to stay level. So grip, in proper grip, we are, we've talked about this a couple of times. It's all about dominant hand holds on to the pistol. Non-dominant hand grips the pistol. The more we grip the pistol with our non-dominant hand, the more we're going to control it. It's about, uh, I hate to say the 60-40 thing, but basically you want to hold on to it as best you can. With those gentlemen, you're driving with your pec muscles. With the women, it's more about wrist and booty. Uh, driving that, driving with the back and pushing out and pulling back will let you line that gun up perfectly. All right. <clears throat> now, if you want to watch one of those, I did my future daughter-in-law, Hillary's uh, class a while back in a live. I'm not sure if we ever get away with that again. I don't know how we got away with it the first time, but Miss Miss Hillary did a, did a basic pistol class, and she was a perfect example of how somebody doesn't shoot an awful lot, but once she got the concept of it, it she's, she's, she's accurate. She's accurate as anything like Miss Johnson. So uh, you can take, take a look at that. Uh, that's a good video for the ladies because we do go over grip and stance and everything else like that. And you can watch a good, uh, how a good student shoots a weapon. So get an opportunity. I recommend you watch that. All right, so here are the three sight systems. Now, I teach the 6 o'clock hold, and I kind of explained that to you. But here is the standard hold or the cutting the bullseye. This is putting your sights in the middle of the bullseye. Now, I've already told you before that this is kind of a hard thing to replicate on a regular basis, especially with a handgun, because most likely at any distance beyond Beyond three yards, your front of your gun is going to be covering the target. Especially if you're doing any kind of aim small, miss ball drills. Now, if we put a paper plate out there, it's just trying to hit the paper plate. And that's kind of what I'd recommend for most students to begin with. Don't worry about bullseyes. Worry about consistent point of aim and consistently impacting the, the, the paper plate in the center. And what normally happens there is somebody has the weapon in their hand, but they've got it directly over their over their nose. If you have the gun directly over your nose, I'm right-handed. I'm right-eye dominant. But I've got the gun out in front of me. That's going to cause me to impact left. Whether I turn my chin now and turn my chin, as I turn my chin and put the gun over my dominant eye, I'm going to be shooting more straight at that point in time. That's a bad word to hear. Shoot straight. We don't. We don't. We don't talk shoot straight. So that's one of our local gun ranges around town, guys. In case you didn't know, um, but shoot straight is one of those bad words. But you're going to shoot straight, and that's the key thing for you. And then they have a combat hold, and a combat hold basically is a good choice when you're really running the gun fast. Um, basically, if we took that paper plate out in front of us, and we're going to run a string of five or a string of ten. We just want to bring it back to that center of the paper plate. Uh, I would recommend you try all three of these. Each one of these is going to give you a little bit more pinpoint accuracy. I will tell you that the six o'clock hold for newbies is a lot easier and a lot more um, repetitive and easier to find each time. When you start getting into that standard hole, especially when you're shooting two, three, four, five shot strings, uh, it's going to be hard to fight recoil management as well as keeping the gun level when you're trying to and keep it in the center. The combat hole, basically, if we're using an 8-inch paper plate, wouldn't be that hard to do, but you're still not going to get that um, uh, accuracy that you want because it is going to uh, allow you to rise and fall above the vertical line. The best one for the vertical and horizontal line is the six o'clock hold because you were able to see your impact and see what the bullet is doing. Now, I wouldn't recommend eyeballing over top of it. That's one of the things, Perry, we talk about prairie dogging all the time where you shoot, you look up, you shoot, you look up. Uh, everything you do, even the factor of taking your finger on and off the trigger, especially when you're in the range, 
I get the whole safety factor of that, but the gun's pointed down range and we're in a closed environment. And the moment you pull your finger off the trigger, put your finger back on the trigger, put your finger back on the trigger, take your finger off the trigger, put your finger back on the trigger. You can imagine how much that messes with your psyche and how that keeps the gun from doing weird stuff, right? Think about this. I'm not saying don't be safe with a gun, but if you're in a range and you have the gun pointed down range, the moment you start taking your finger on and off the trigger, trying to be safe, at that point in time, you're restarting the race each time. And that becomes a little more challenging for each student to get a hold of. I highly recommend that you get in the habit of running a string that's in a speed that you can control. It's really about speed and accuracy, if you kind of get your head around that. The speed and accuracy, we need to shoot the shoot the bullets on the target in the 8-inch paper plate or whatever you're going to use, 6-inch paper plate or whatever you have back there. And you want to be able to do it in a cadence that you're going to be able to hit uh, 80%. You're not going to get any pulls or anything else like that. And if you are running this target and you've got a good cadence of maybe one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, that's lining the sights up, finding it, banging it. Lining the sights up, finding it, banging it, right? But if you're doing it and you are not hitting, well, you need to slow down. But if you're able to do a cadence of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and you're hitting all of them, maybe you need to go a little faster. So I can tell you, once you get comfortable running a pistol, the faster you shoot, the more accurate you're going to be. But you've got to make sure you keep the gun level. W- women driving the weapon out and the gun's staying level and it's just rising just enough to get it up there, that's fine. But if the gun's doing this when you're shooting, you can't shoot fast because you're going to be all over the place. We have to control it first. And how do we control it? Back muscles. Gentlemen, peck muscles and getting that good, smooth cadence of the trigger, right? But the idea of this, those iron sights are on top of this weapon and they need to be in your line of sight before you cut that trigger again. Because if that gun's at this angle and you cut the trigger, where's it going? Where's it going? Where's it going? Where's it going? The gun has to be level, has to be straight, has to be lined up on the sights before you cut the trigger. And that's going to help us tremendously. That's where six o'clock hold comes in. It's the one I've been teaching for 13 years. It does put a lot of people in a a better position. Uh, A lot of times um, spending time doing three or four different site systems. I would recommend sticking to one, find one that you like and keep it up until you get comfortable. Six o'clock hold's been taught an awful lot. It gives you the ability and putting them all together with a good grip and a good stance and a good trick good sight picture, good sight alignment, and keeping those iron sights level, uh, you're going to do just fine. And then pick a drill that's going to work for you. The drill is an exercise to refine your iron sight skills. These things like this, uh, you know, you do the line drill. There are probably 20 to 25 drills on our YouTube channel that you could go and pick a drill of the day and go over there and shoot it and get comfortable. You, you should, if you, last time you went to the range, if you didn't have some kind of plan besides just going over and shooting a gun, every time you touched that pistol, you were picking up a habit. And you got to make sure those habits are good habits, not bad habits. Because every time you touch that pistol, that's why we stick with five rounds at a time. Because if we skip the five rounds, I could probably control this weapon through five rounds. But if I got Glock 17 with 17 rounds, I know I'm along for the ride from 6 through 17. It may be a little challenge for me to keep the gun level stable and coming back to my line of sight before I cut the trigger again. So, that's beautiful. All right. Recoil management. We talked about this, but recoil management is one of those things that see how this gun's rising up in this guy's hand. Do you think that weapon, look, look, look where he's got his trigger finger and look where his thumbs are on that gun. Is that a proper grip? The answer would be no. He's got that sight system on there, that, that red dot, right? But is that red dot going to be back on sight pretty quick here? Uh, Look how much muzzle flip he's getting on this gun. And that muzzle flip is challenging for 
men and women, but being able to control that muzzle for it doesn't rise and kick. If you look there, he's actually he's got his right his left thumb on top of his right thumb. That left hand for you right handers, that left hand should be touching that firearm up on the slide. When that thumb is buried into the other thumb like that, and you see that gap behind his hand there, look at that gap between the the this area right here of the firearm. He's got this here. And he's got he's got a little gapping right there. Do you see that? What do you think this firearm is gonna do every time he shoots if he doesn't close up that gap? It's gonna rise, right? But if he would have reached up and really grabbed a hold of that and held that firearm, look at that. Look how little bit of muzzle flip he's getting just by doing that. That little bit, right? That grip he's got his hands on there, he probably could have got away with that if he wouldn't have had that gap at the tang. But a gap in that dead tang is allowing that gun to flip. I told you many times before that a firearm is a bully. And you give it anything, it's going to take it. Firearms, racehorses, race cars, they want to be ran. And anytime you run something timid like that, or pull it back like the horses or the race car wants to be ran, and you're trying to run it five miles an hour, you're going to carbon it all up. Same thing with the firearm. It wants to be ran, and the more you're timid with it, it's going to do a lot of crazy stuff you don't even think about, like jamming anything else like firearms don't jam on a regular basis people jam them not the firearms themselves uh recoil management is one of those things we've done video, plenty of videos on that but to make it simple and easy for you guys gentlemen drive with your pec muscles uh late and squeeze hard with your where your non-dominant hand this is the key thing your non-dominant hand controls the weapon uh and you're not in your dominant hand your dominant hand holds on to the gun. Your non-dominant hand controls the gun. And women, it's about wrist and booty. Drive out with that back muscles. Drive out with that dominant hand. Pull back with that non-dominant hand. You will allow this weapon to re return to that, that vertical line, and that vertical line will keep the gun level. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Okay. So... Front sight, we always talked about that. I showed you this earlier, but I wanted to show you this one too because understanding that front sight is the most important thing. There are always two sights on a gun, but technically when we always joke and kill with people, we ask them how many sights there are on there, and they always point to the one in the back, and they always point to the one in the front, and they say two. And I tell them, really? Is the front post a sight without the back post? And the answer is no. There's only one sight on this gun, and it takes the front and the back to marry to make it. Now, this is set up on the target there with the blurriness, but I wanted to show you that there's a lot of stuff on the market today the three dots are, or the blacked out dot sights and stuff like that you're not going to see. Well, what's important on this picture here is how level the front post is with the two back posts. And that's kind of, if you kind of look at the target itself, there is that black line, that crosshair line. And it looks like this front post is just below at the six o'clock hold of that the white dot that's out there. And that's kind of what I wanted to show you. Concentrating on that front post is so important. But you don't really, now we're getting a little bit off tangent here. If you ever try to dry fire anything, dry firing itself, uh, uh, you can watch that 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 uh, front post tip and bend and everything else. You're going to get a clean, crisp trigger engagement by dry firing. It's a great drill to help you do this, as well as uh, keeping the gun level as you are uh, really working through the cadence of 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 a trigger engagement getting that trigger back slowly until the weapon fires is one of those things that uh, uh, it takes a little bit of time to understand, but once you got it, you got it. All right. 
A lot of times there's there's only a couple things I could tell most people mess up when it comes to iron sights. And I kind of already went through this. Uh, we're beating a dead horse with this stuff sometimes. But I, we, as firearms instructors, we have to say it multiple different ways. And it's one of those ways it gets it catches every student. So uh, I put this together to kind of give you an idea where I would give you the most important thing is the negative space. And we'll bring this back out again. The negative space is probably one of those things that people tend to not uh, concentrate on as much as they should. Now, you we see this here again, but we want to make sure that we don't have this site off to one side or off to another. And this happens a lot for students because how they put the gun in their hand. So what I tell most people is if I'm putting the weapon in my hand, I want to make sure that the firearm goes down my arm as much as possible. Now I'm going to take this and turn it just a little bit to get it to go off my arm. Can you imagine what's going to happen when I start lining that thing up? The gun's already at an angle. And same thing if you're left-handed, the gun's at an angle versus here, and you're trying to turn your chin. So keeping the gun at a level position will help you tremendously, as well as keeping your dots lined up. This is a good little thing. I made this, I, I give these all to my students once in a while to help them understand what they need to do and how they need to see it. It really opens their eyes up to what the sights are because it is kind of intimidating at first trying to figure all this stuff out. Because a lot of times they'll focus out here. And if this is here and that's there, you know you're going to shoot high at that point in time and low. All right. So most of the stuff with uh, iron sights now. Uh, I went back and I said to you, hey, listen, um, you don't need to move your sights. Now, I had a Glock 43X yesterday or the day before that I took it in the back and I started shooting crazy with it. And I looked down there and somehow or another that sight had got moved. So there are times when sights do move. So I don't want you to tell, I don't want you to think that the sight the, the gun can't be off. It can be off. It, it, it's not most likely it's not off. It's you. Uh, but there are times when it was. And the yesterday, there was one of them. Well, it was yesterday. It was two days ago. Uh, but, yeah, I guess the gun had fell. And uh, it hit the sights and caused it to drift off, which caused the whole impacting thing. And I went back there shooting. And, I'm, and, and normally... I walked back there with some pride in my head, thinking I'm going to be able to do it. And I was shooting. I was like, what the heck? And I kind of looked at it. And all of a sudden, I saw, oh, my gosh. It was way off to one side. So you can have sights that are wrong. Uh, but very unlikely is it always that. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, I would recommend uh, when we get down to these videos and things like that is just purge on them a little bit and get your ideas. I will tell you, though, when you come to the range and you're looking to get maybe more accurate or you're getting better trigger pull or you're getting uh, better sight alignment, I would recommend that you pick one thing to work on at a time. Um, it's, it's somewhat challenging, like anything else. If you don't have proper grip, you don't have proper stance, you don't have proper trigger control, that's astrobating everything else you're doing. Try to keep the sights where they are. So it it all starts with what we talked about, the grip and the stance and the trigger control, the sight picture and sight alignment. But all of them are important. There's not one that's not important. It's just what weight do we give each one of them? It's almost in a point of uh, you've got to concentrate on all of them, but it the gun has to be in a stable position first. And that starts with grip and stance and trigger control. And once you get your trigger control down, then you can really concentrate on getting more and more accurate. The more we use a firearm and become more and more comfortable, the easier it's going to be for us and the easier it's going to be to be accurate with it, right? Because I've now it's not about bullseyes. It's not about stacking or clover leafing. 
I don't know if you know what a clover leaf is, but you imagine a clover leaf. Imagine shooting bullets that touch each other. That's a clover leaf. Now, that's wonderful. That's great. You're a good, accurate person. But are you shooting too slow? Most likely, right? And if you kind of get your head around what we're doing with these pistols nowadays, they are not for bullseyes. They are for defensive accuracy. And what is your defensive accuracy? Most times that eight inch paper plate at that 30 plus and end, 30 feet and end. If you can hit that paper plate 30 feet and end, congratulations, your defensive accuracy is good. If you're having problems or you're shooting low on that paper plate at 10 feet, then you need to really work on it because you're doing something to manipulate the pistol. So, uh, you know, here at our range, we use, we give free paper targets out all the time anyways. Uh, but in our cabinet back there is paper plates. And we use paper plates in all of our training classes because they're easy, simple, and they're a great target to use because it gives you the ability to be um, not about bullseyes. It's about consistency, hitting that paper plate every time. All right. In conclusion, uh, I hope we've taken some of the confusion out of using your iron sights. I know I kind of went on a tangent there about everything else, but at the end of it, it's all one thing. The sights are not going to make you more accurate if you're just not comfortable shooting a pistol. Remember, understanding your iron sights will increase your accuracy which will in turn build your confidence. Now, this is the final picture of this, and it kind of shows you that that's a Glock, that's a Glock uh, box and dot system. I don't know if you guys uh, are Glockies. Uh, there are a few probably that are on here that are. And Glock system has a box and dot system. And all you do is put the dot in the box. But what's more important than any sight system at all is making sure that that front top of that front post is not higher or lower than the back post. And that's going to keep a gun. Because remember, a level pistol always shoots level. Always shoots level. All right. So a couple questions for you, if you don't mind. We're going to open up some Q&A. Maybe the, you guys have a question or not. Uh, if not, that's not a big deal either. Sometimes we do these uh, for, our, for our own uh, abilities. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that uh, we talked about the gift cards one more time, because that's an important thing for us. I'll go ahead and pull this off the system. And there I am back. I'll take off this one. No, I'll take that one off. Put this one in. And there I am back again. Beautiful. So the gift cards themselves, so they are, uh, we have the $100 gift card deal. You buy $100 worth of gift cards and you get $20 for free. Those are at our store here. We appreciate that very much. Let's go over to our comments and see if there's anything in there for comments. We have eight people. Uh, looks like eight are on uh, watching this tonight. We appreciate that very much. Let's see. Oh, Natasha. Easy. There we go. Uh, Cliff. Cliff. Yeah, and your microphone management is all over the place. Sounds good. Yeah, I apologize about that. Cliff will work on that. Says oh, my, my microphone management. I'm probably pushing up against it all the time. I apologize about that. Um, so maybe Johnny, Johnny, am I cutting in and out, bud? Um, all right, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Cliff, if you're watching on a phone, it could be a little choppy from that because of how it feeds in. We are hardwired into our into our system. But we'll try to work on it. Oh, 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 Cliff started the started the video and restarted it. It's all good now. Okay, that's good, Cliff. Thank you, Cliff. Where are you from, bud? Um, we appreciate you being here. Oh, here we go, New Hampshire. Just found the channel. There we go. Let's get this. Just found the channel in Yankee 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 Redneck. <laughs> that's beautiful. Just found the channel three days ago. I was psyched to find out you are in the same city I, I am and would like to find out about classes, and they are available. Yes, buddy, you can go to our website. Our website basically has all the classes. At this point in time, we have our basic pistol class on sale for $99, and it's a great overall. Uh, goes through grip, stance, trigger control, sight picture, sight alignment, 
And if you don't have a pistol, we're going to let you use one of our pistols or a couple of our pistols to pick the one you like. That's the cool thing about us. We are a training facility, so we carry a lot of different pistols that like, we don't carry a ton of extracurricular uh, pistols. We carry mostly home defense, uh, Smith, Taurus, Ruger, Glock, High Point, um, just the name brand products that we think people would like at that point in time. And then uh, we have the ability to let you shoot those weapons and maybe find something that's going to fit your fit your requirements there uh, and everything else. That's the beauty of those people this morning when the husband and wife came here today. We work with husbands and wives. We always make sure the wife is whatever we're shooting, she likes it. Because we can get the husband to shoot anything at that point in time. But when it gets down to it, we want to make sure that uh, but she is comfortable with everything. Minnesota. Cliff's from Minnesota. Well, thank you, Cliff. I'm glad you I'm sure it's nice and warm there today. What's the weather like, buddy? Cool? Cold? Maybe? Thank you, New Hampshire. I'd like to find. Yep. Uh, okay. So, Natasha, how are you? I'm late, but I'm here. Yep, Natasha, you're late. Hope Natasha's mom's on. That's that'd be awesome. Natasha, Natasha's mom. They're, Natasha's one of our first members. She hopped on right in the beginning. I think we're four months or five months in. I think she's one of our founding members of this channel. So we appreciate her. She's one of our members here at the store as well. Uh, she shoots on a regular basis. She's taken many, many classes with us. She went from a newbie to one heck of a shooter. She has done a lot of different tactical classes and all that stuff, and I'm so, so proud of her. Miss Johnson, how are you tonight? I haven't seen you since we, we kissed this morning about 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, with you going to work, uh, my wife's my work, my works at a school. She works very hard. She's on the call. We appreciate you. I love you, darling. And uh, you're 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 my life, my world. All right. Oh, gee, bitty Christmas, Cliff. Thirty-two degrees. Uh, I'm a Florida boy. I I don't do uh, I don't do cold. I mean, I don't even have any warm clothes. I went to Chicago two Christmases ago to take Miss Johnson for a bucket list. She wanted to see the Chicago Bears play. Uh, in Soldier Field, and she talked me into going up there, and uh, I had to borrow a jacket from one of my buddies, and that thing was half a cow because I'm not a small guy, but the buddy, my buddy who borrowed it from was about three feet taller than I am, so my arms were hanging <laughs> hanging from the bottom of that thing, and uh, we got a jacket and a hat, and it was a Monday night game, and it was freezing. It was just freezing. It was just cold. I know why it's called the Windy City now. Because that stuff is going down my neck and all that stuff like that. All right. So we're getting close to the hours here. Do you have any, any questions tonight at all? Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, I hope answer some questions for you. Um, everything. Uh, well, you know, it's Tuesday night. It's it's taco night. Tuesday night is taco night. You guys are here. We're going for taco somewhere. Miss Johnson, you going with us? That's one of the questions we always ask you. We'd love to have you with us. All right, guys. Uh, next week, we're going to do another live. I don't know what it's going to be about. I keep bringing these up. What well, you guys have been feeling, uh, my uh, uh, ideas about videos. Every week, I get some kind of... Uh, some kind of idea from somebody's comment that we're doing here. And I would ask you to do the same. If you have something you have been thinking about, or you would like us to do a video on, whether it be a YouTube video, or you'd rather us uh, do a live on it, we would love to hear that information. Uh, we try not to take these out past an hour. Uh, we're just passing that point now. I'm going to play the outro music. I'm going to go back one more time and give everybody a shout out real quick. And this is Miss Hillary. I'm going to give you a kiss, girlfriend. Tell us, my that is uh, Johnny's uh, Johnny's girlfriend, Miss Johnson. There's is your kiss. Uh, okay, Natasha. We're going to give you a, a cheer. There you go. All right. 
I dizzy. Oh, there we go. Get you there. Cliff, welcome to the channel, buddy. We're glad you're here. Hope that you hope hope you subscribe to us. Yeah, and Yankee Redneck from New Hampshire. Oh, Natasha's bringing some friends in. There we go. Good. Awesome. 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 All right, guys. So here comes the outro music. Until next week, God bless. Be safe. And remember, you are your first line of defense. And we love you very much. And we appreciate you um, always being there for us, guys. You are the best. Until next time, until next Tuesday at 6 o'clock, we'll see you.